Hey guitar enthusiasts, welcome back. Lauren Bateman here. In this video, we're gonna go over a common question I get, which is about time signatures. What are they? What's the difference? What the heck does it actually mean? We're gonna talk about that in this lesson video. Real quick, before we get into the actual lesson video, I just wanna say thank you some, to some of my YouTube supporters, uh, Michael Cannon, James Burke, Timothy Timmerman. Uh, thank you guys so much for your donations. I really appreciate you guys uh, doing that. Shows me that you guys love what I'm doing here on YouTube. Thank you so much. Let's get into the lesson video. So when we're talking about time signatures, I usually start people off with what we call 4-4 time signature. So you can see from the diagram over here, it's two fours stacked on top of each other. Now, all time signatures look like this. There's a number on top, and there's a number on the bottom. Now, the number on top tells us what the actual count is. So in this example here, we have a four on the top. So that's gonna tell us our count is four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The number on the bottom tells us what ki kind of note equals one. So in this example, we have a number four, so that's going to be a quarter note. So every time you see a quarter note, you would count one, all right? So think of it as like a dollar bill. A dollar bill equals one. And if you subdivide that into quarters, you would have four quarters, okay? So think about that with four, four time. So once again, the top number is the count, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and the bottom note indicates that a quarter note is equal to the number one. So what does that mean when we have something like three, four for a time signature, which is a very common time signature in music, four, four and three, four both. So there's now a three on the top, the bottom is still four. So we're still talking about quarter notes as the subdivision here, okay? Now we're gonna count to three, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And if you notice with three, four times, you feel like you're going to sway. We call this a waltz, okay? And that's how you know the difference. So if you're like, I don't know what time signature my song is, usually four, four is right on the beat. You can tap your foot to it. It's straight in line, it's dead on. A waltz is more like a flow. One, two, three. You feel like you can sway. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that's the difference between three, four and what we call four, four. Hey guys, real quick, if you're enjoying this content, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you know when I release more lessons and videos. Now, you might have seen another common pattern, which is six, eight. And six, eight and three, four are fairly interchangeable. They're both swing or waltz feels. So when we have something like six, eight, you'll see on the top, we have the number six. So instead of counting to three or to four, we're gonna count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the bottom note is an eight. So this is telling us that eighth notes equal one. All right, so when you see the rhythm here, you'll see we have pairs of eighth notes. So instead of having six quarter notes, we have three pairs of eighth notes or, or six individual eighth notes here. So that's all it's saying. It's saying count to six and it's an eighth note. Now, how do you know when you're gonna use three, four versus six, eight? Because they kind of feel the same. You could just go one and two and three and one and two and three and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So what's the difference and when would you, when would you use it? I use six, eight a lot for picking. So say, um, you're just gonna put my pick down here. Say I was gonna finger pick something like a song like Hallelujah. Okay, I'm just picking a G chord. It's easier to count. Now eventually you're not gonna have to count everything, but I think it's easier to count as one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 versus going one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. Can you do it either way? Yes, they're kind of they're kind of interchangeable, but 
on the sheet music, the sheet music, you'll see eighth notes versus quarter notes. So if you have a song that has picking and it has that waltz feel, it's probably gonna be in six, eight. If you have a song that's more strumming and just simple downbeats, it's probably gonna be in three, four. Um, but I'll let you know on songs we do here, whether we're gonna be counting to three or whether we're gonna be counting to six. Now those are your three most common that you're probably gonna run into, but you can have some weird time signatures. You could have 17, 16, which means there's going to be 17 beats and 16th notes are going to be the count. Now we're talking about really weird kind of like percussive music, um, but it does happen. There are, you could see 12, eight as well. That's another time signature. But the most common ones that you're gonna see in kind of popular and contemporary music are four, four, three, four, and six, eight but now you know what to do when you see those time signatures. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and leave a comment below with questions you might have that you want me to answer. YouTube is gonna pop a couple more videos over here. Go check those out. I love helping students. There might be something cool over here that YouTube's gonna suggest. I hope I'll see you guys in another lesson video.